In this video, I want to talk about using tasks versus subtasks in Asana. This is something I get asked about quite a lot. People aren't sure, should I use a task? Should I be going into more subtasks? How many subtasks should I use? So this is something I want to try and clarify today. If you have any questions at the end of this video, please leave me a comment below, happy to help you there. And if you do want to get more support with Asana, with account setup, team training, have a look in the link below the description of this video to learn more about my Asana consulting services and options. But let's get into this video. So tasks versus subtasks in Asana. Subtasks are a great way of adding more detail into your project, into your tasks, in a way that lets you um, avoid making the entire project really granular and uh, you know too messy for example like you know i've got this production sprint with some subtasks in here instead of having them in the main project and having lots and lots of detail in the project i can kind of consolidate things into the subtasks so that my main project stays a little bit um, kind of more minimal a bit more organized and what i would say i mean in a very broad sense the rule is like the task generally reflects you know what is the piece of work that you need to do as it relates to a project and some tasks would typically you be used to break down that task into smaller steps now i actually think a good place to start when understanding this is what are some of the limitations of subtasks because Based on these limitations, that actually might make the decision around whether to use tasks or subtasks a little bit clearer. Uh, and so one big limitation is around how subtasks uh, behave on the timeline and in workload uh, in Asana. So let's look at the timeline first of all. So here I am, I'm inside this new product launch project. And if I go to my timeline view, this is my sort of Gantt chart view, uh, I'll just scroll back here. The timeline is a very great way to see a, uh, a very visual rep representation of my project when different phases and tasks are starting and finishing. I can see my milestones here and my dependencies. You can see here, this task by that little symbol has uh, two subtasks on it. Now at the time of recording this, um, subtasks do not show up on the timeline. Maybe this will be updated in the future, I don't know. Uh, so maybe Asana will give us the option to click and expand and see subtasks. If so, that'd be great. And if this, that update has been made by the time this video goes out, that's fantastic. That might make this a little bit easier. But right now, subtasks don't show up on the timeline. So I think that straight away is something important to keep in mind is when you're building out your project and setting up your timeline, subtasks aren't going to appear. Uh, and that might be the differentiator between whether to use subtasks or not. Now, a slight workaround to this is, let's say I do have, a, I have a subtask here, I really want it to be a subtask, but I also really want it to be on my timeline as well. What I can do is, so let's create a task, test task. If I click into this, so I'm gonna click the little speech bubble here and go to the task menu, I can add this uh, to a project. So let's add it to the new product launch and let's just give it a date of, let's just say July 15. So now if I go back here, uh, here we go. Actually, let's do August 4th. So let's change that to August 4th. There we go. So this test task, this one that I just created, it's still a subtask of this main parent task, but I've also added it to the main project as well. So if I actually go back to my list view, you can see the test task up here. It sort of lives as a task, but also it's still a subtask. So that's a slight workaround that you can use if you want to add subtasks to your timeline. So the other limitation of subtasks is within the workload. So if you go to portfolios, this is a feature that's part of the business subscription. The portfolio view is designed to give you an overview of projects that you're working on. You can see the status and progress on those projects. And one of the features in here is the workload, where I can see, if I scroll back a little bit further, how much work people in my team have on their plate at any one time. And so I can see here, right, this, uh, let's go open these people. Paul, I have this task here. It's gonna take five hours to complete this task. So it's allocated me five hours of work on that day. Now, if I go into a subtask, actually let's assign that to me. Let's just, uh, even if I click and show more fields and I say this is like 10 hours of work, that has no impact on my workload here. So if you are on the business subscription and you're using the workload to track how much work people have and who has capacity for more work, that's another important limitation of subtasks to understand is that subtasks will have no impact on people's workload. 
So just between those two, how subtasks are treated in the workload and the timeline, that may determine whether you use subtasks or not. But like I said towards the start of the video, generally, uh, subtasks are used to break down a larger task into smaller steps, almost a bit like a checklist, and also to involve multiple people in a task. So here's an example. This is my boring morning routine. This is a, a, a task or a um, blog post that I'm, that I'm working on. I actually wrote it earlier today. So this is from my main account now. And so this, uh, this is the um, blog post and podcast title. And you can see here I have a bit of a checklist going with subtasks for the various steps that I need to do. So in this sense, subtasks are being used as basically like a checklist of what do I need to do um, for, for this blog post. And so you can see I've, done, I've got the writing the post and recording the podcast. I've done those two steps, I've uh, completed those up here. And I've got these two steps. These are assigned to Angeline, my assistant, who will be uploading this to SoundCloud and doing other bits for me. And so subtasks are a great way to follow a checklist and involve multiple people. So even though I'm assigned the main task, I'm the one responsible for getting this piece of content ready, I can assign a few little bits to Angeline for her to complete. And they can each have their own due dates. I can click into these. I've got notes in here for Angeline to follow, and I can comment on here to follow up with her if I need to. By assigning this to Angeline as well, it actually puts it onto her task list. So when she clicks to her My Tasks page up here, she will actually see that subtask on her list as well. A useful tip for you um, with subtasks, uh, if you've watched some of my other videos, you might know I'm a big fan of Text Expander. Text Expander is a tool that you can use to store things like email templates, basically just like blocks of text that you can quickly recall if you need to. And so I've actually got lists of subtasks in here. So if I go on to a new, um, start a new task here, I can type the subtask, uh, the snippet semicolon blog sub. Oh, let's try that again. Blog sub, and it will quickly generate a list of subtasks for me. So it's a bit like having a template or a checklist stored in Text Expander. So that's a bit of a power user tip for you if you want to get a bit fancy with Asana and Text Expander. And one final thing I will mention with uh, how to use subtasks is um, sometimes I will choose not to assign subtasks to myself even though I'm the one doing them. So going back to this example before, this blog post that I'm working on, I assigned the first two to myself because I want, I basically want those to appear on my task list. So this morning, this write, write post and record podcast, these were actually on my task list for today for me to complete. Um, and I wanted that reminder, so I assigned them to myself. However, all of these other ones here, like uploading a featured image, um, creating a pretty link, I don't want to assign all of those to myself because otherwise my task list is going to get pretty long with every single subtask and I don't really want that. Um, so in some cases, I think you can be more strategic with choosing not to assign subtasks. Um, instead, they act as a bit of a checklist. So the person assigned to the main task, they can refer to that checklist and they can tick them off, but you don't necessarily have to assign all of them to the, to the assignee up here. So that's what I do is I assign the ones that I want to be reminded about, but I often just leave some unassigned but I, and I'll check them off when I look at this main task. And that just keeps my to-do list uh, a little bit cleaner. And so there you have it. That is a look at subtasks versus tasks. Uh, like I said, I think start by understanding the limitations of subtasks. That's going to be a, a key thing to um, just keep in mind when deciding whether to use a task or a subtasks for planning your work. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.